Hi, I'm Jason Marsh. I'm glad to be able to show you new code. This is an example of seeing data from a single organization in a whole bunch of different ways. And I happen to be recording this on a Quest 3 and a, a Samsung phone for doing the augmented reality to capture myself. First thing is we can see just a distribution by product subcategory. You can see that this company is, is involved in furniture, office supplies, and technology, especially like machines and copiers. You can see that some of the biggest, biggest um, transactions are around machines and copiers. All right, it's just a quick way to get a sense of what the business is involved in. Here we can see the data laid out in a variety of ways. Now, um, the daily feed of daily transactions, you can see a couple of really big transactions over time. Um, they're categorized by technology, office supplies, and furniture. You can see what it looks like if it was monthly. And we had our flow interpreter decide whether to go ahead and map this out to aggregate by quarters and aggregate by years. This is a really good way to see the difference between these things. You can, you know, obviously, um, the technology peaked in 2019 and dropped a little bit in 2020, but um, you wouldn't have a good sense of that just by looking at the more detailed views. But then it's also, you can see what really happened in 2020 is the last quarter was really good, but there was three low quarters there. So just looking at that top line number wouldn't really tell you that you, what you really should have been looking at is what happened in the prior three quarters. The level of detail you're looking at information is very important. And in this case, getting down to the actual transition transactions gets to be really quite meaningful. Let me show you more about that. So here we are looking at every transaction and we can see that some of these transactions, you know, with uh, certain individuals were really quite high, 17,000, 14,000. So this is a really good way to see, you know, get down to the detail of the information. But there's also some interesting third dimension here, which is profit. We come here and look at, you know, some of these are profitable and some of them are not. Let's figure out a little bit more about the profit and um, profit margin on some of these transactions. So we put the, the discount rate here on the front. We have sales and we have profit across the side. So anything below this grid is a loss. To the right is profit. Look at some of these discounts and you can really see that a bunch of transactions with big, big discounts resulted in no profit at all. Um, in fact, pretty big losses all the way out here to um, in, on some of these um, transactions. So it, by looking at the detail, you get a very different picture of, of what's happening with this company's transactions. Here's another way of looking at it. We're going to put the same data onto a map um, per zip code in this case. And the height is the size of the deal and it's colored by the profit. Take a look, California, pretty profitable. Seattle, pretty profitable. What's going on with Texas? How come Texas is nowhere near as profitable? What's going on here in the Midwest, um, in Chicago? Looks like the Eastern Seaboard is pretty profitable, but with a few exceptions. So really interesting to see a geographic distribution of profit ratios. Now let's just understand a little bit more about what's going on per state in this case. So we've got these three little stacks. Remember, we've got technology, we've got office supplies, and we've got furniture. And we put all of those stacks on the same um, on the same map, so you can get a sense of the structure. You can see, you know, California, New York, Texas, and Florida, of course, are some of the big sales um, places. And, but it is interesting to see that technology did, you know, pretty much even with furniture in some of these places. And in other places, the furniture did much better, like Colorado, much more furniture than technology, where in California, they're about equal. Let's drill into a little bit more detail. And in this case, instead of just looking at it per state, we're going to look at it per zip code. So now you can see that some of the big cities, this is the same view. It's just that we've stacked the dots in a little different way. And 
So now that we've stacked the dots in these e remember each dot is a transaction still. Now that we've stock stacked the dots in these columns, we have four different distribution centers. We have this distribution center in Georgia, in Texas, and Florida, and one in Illinois. And here we can see that these distribution centers, where did they ship to? Well, a lot of times they shipped to the closest place, but not always. Let's understand that just a little bit better. So now we're looking at just the most optimal shipments. So where the end location of the purchase um, is shipped from the closest distribution center. Looks nice and clean. That's not actually the way the world is. Now let's look at all of those places where it was shipped to the least close uh, location. And it turns out that's about 5% of the packages were shipped to the least close um, location. So really some interesting supply chain discussions here, as well as environmental impact um, and possibly cost as well as these, um, just as the shipments are no longer optimal. Let's take a look at some internal team dynamics of this organization. We've got three regions here. We're gonna take a look at Texas, California, and New York. Each one of these dots is a person um, with a certain role. And in this case, the Texas region. Let's take a look at Texas. It looks like there's a few really important nodes, but otherwise kind of four groups that really kind of keep, keep to their own with the exception of talking through maybe their manager. California is shaped more like a potato. This is good. A lot of people, everybody talking to each other. A few exceptions, but a lot of interconnection is a good thing. Uh, New York has its own shape, kind of a combination of the two. And then we can also notice, and then we can also notice that there's really only a few connections between these different groups. Let's drill into that a little bit more. So now what we've done is we've taken the teams and we've organized them based on, um, based on their role. So for example, a sales support role or the regional manager role. Turns out the regional managers are the ones who are really connecting. They're, they're the glue that are connecting folks. It's like there's another connection down here, but those regional manners, managers are really the ones who are keeping the organization communicating there's a lot of risk associated with that. Let's see what happens when Bernard leaves the company unexpectedly. Now we've got a totally different shape and structure where this group here, it's like New York, is now really kind of off on their own. It's a little bit of connection through some of the enterprise sales folks, but, but that uh, could result in a fair number of inefficiencies and challenges in the organization. So thanks for taking a look at Nuco. You can see that um, one organization has many different visualization types that um, can be used to understand an organization's sales, their profit, and how people are interacting together, um, both across distribution, across time, and all of it done here floating together on, in this single view.